What do we say, fam? Or what do we say, <laughs> Whoa, simplexers? That was such a long pause. I wanted to see if you would stop me because you said that you like it when I say, what do we say, simplexers? Well, I do like that, but I try not to make a habit of interrupting you. Oh, I appreciate that. Even though I do a lot. Well, well, well. I just want to <laughs> say welcome, those of us that are listening and watching. My name is Sammy Foster, joined with the one and only co-host Boots. Boots. And I have been waiting for this day, mm -hmm. <laughs> because today is the day of the debut of the Boots hat. Take a look at it. I told you it was coming. I told you it was in the making, yeah. and I stand by my word. And so what do you think? You know, it, it, I really do like it. Yeah, your I brother don't... said that he, that, he, that he really liked it. And John is not a big hat guy. No. Yeah. Did you see him wearing that? No, I can't. Yeah. Mm-mm. But that'd be that would that would be so great to wear wear a hat with your little brother's yes, it <laughs> would. nickname on yes, it. Yes, it would. But he'll you know never what? do it because he's 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 threatened by you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it is. That's what it is. Don't give an inch. Yeah. Yeah. No, it does I don't think I could pull it off to be honest with you. I do. Um I'm not I'm not really a hat guy either. It's our head shape, I think. Uh-huh. Um well. But it does it does really look good on you. I appreciate that. And I think that it would look good on you too. So <laughs> on YouTube. Back are these <laughs> are these in the making? Are we gonna get them for our simplexiters? I'm She's fact saying checking. Yes. She's saying uh, we don't have any money. She's saying we have lots of money. <laughs> yeah. That's what she said, right? <laughs> and then I segue into like a like a campaign. Yeah. If you All want right. to support this ministry. Go find me. <laughs> Simplexity. Oh. Why'd you just slide me your pen? Oh. Thank Can you. I have that back? Nope. But I do, um, I do very much like my hat, and I do think that we are in the conversations about a little simplexity merch, of mm -hmm. which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. We have big things on the horizon, and so thanks for joining along. This is a podcast where we take seemingly complex matters and attempt to make them plain and simple. You see how I segued right into that? That was flawless. And today we have a hot topic some people wouldn't call it a hot topic. They care less about it. Nevertheless, this is a conversation between you and I that uh, I think has been robust when we've had it. Yeah. And I think it'll prove to be the same as we talk about it on the pod. Cast. Come on. That's right. So today uh, we're talking about the concept of honor and respect. I know yes. this is something that you um, are very passionate about. We've discussed it organically, and then we thought... Why not invite other people into the conversation as well? And so uh, with that being said, could you give us a little bit of a baseline working definition of honor and respect? I certainly can. Because you would say that there is a distinction there. I very much would say there's a distinction there. And I think that the reason that we have engaged in this conversation in the past and that it's a worthwhile conversation in the present is because... We have lost the art or the, the, really the value of honoring one another. I believe that as a follower of Jesus, we are called, commended, and commanded to honor one another. Uh, but yet, because many times people think that the, the word honor and the word respect are synonymous, it is very important that we delineate the two. And so yep. when it comes to the working definition of honor, honor is to regard or to treat someone with admiration and value. Okay. I love that. Yeah. It's to regard and to treat someone with admiration and value versus respect Whereas respect, hold on, I got it on my little iPad here, but... What's uh, your battery at? It's at 7%. Oof. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to hit it and get it. <laughs> yeah, hurry, read, <laughs> read out all the definitions. Whereas, <laughs> whereas respect is a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited, here's the key word, elicited by their abilities, their qualities, and achievements. Mm -hmm. And so I like to say it this way, honor should be a given one to another, whereas respect is earned. 
Okay. Honor should be the baseline of how we treat one another regardless of qualities, characteristics, and or achievements, whereas we see them as image bearers of God. Mm -hmm. The reason that we honor one another is because we see their intrinsic value, that they were created fearfully and wonderfully, that they're a fellow human being, that we're in this thing together. And despite whether it be their failures or their shortcomings, we are still called to honor them. And so I, I like to say it like this. When it comes to you and I being commanded to honor, I think honor is more reflective of the giver than the receiver. Does that make sense? What do you mean by that? It means it communicates more about who it is that is giving the honor rather than the one receiving the honor. Many times we predicate honor on, yeah. are you worth honoring? Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's not what Scripture tells us to do. Scripture tells us to honor one another regardless of their achievements, their qualities, and or 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 rather their their you know accomplishments or characteristics, things like that. We're called to honor one another because God loves them, God created them, and because He did that, there's value in them. And so many times, people that don't honor, I think it's more a reflection on their shortcomings than it is the person that they're resisting to honor. Yeah. So it's more so kind of that conflation of honor, respect. Okay, I'm going to honor you if I if I deem that you're worthy of it. Absolutely. Essentially, instead Absolutely. of recognizing that you know every person made in the image God, made in the image of God, is therefore deserving of honor. I think that's valuable. And so I think that when we consider Scripture and we consider what we're called to do so as to create a more harmonious and loving and gracious and functional in environment, landscape, relationally, the baseline should be is that we live in a culture and cultivate a culture of honor, where we honor everyone and anyone. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is the day and age that we live in, it's a culture of dishonor. Yeah. That we dishonor one another with frequency and with liberty. When we do so because of so much that we've cultivated opposite of honor that now empowers us in our dishonor, whether it's political divide, whether it's now that we can anonymously sit behind a keyboard and levy accusations and be keyboard warriors and and sort of, you know, vent our frustrations, vitriol, anger, disdain, dislike, whatever, that we have made it much more easy to dishonor one another, moving further and further away from God's call on the believer's life to honor one another. We even do this in the church. We'll hate on other Christians. Mm. We'll ridicule those that fall into sin. We'll hate on those that, that either believe different denominationally than we do. We get good at dishonoring. And I think so much of our, the upheaval that we're experiencing in our day and age between any tribe of people is because we have cultivated a culture of dishonor. And so for all intents and purposes of this podcast, we just want to talk about the complex environment that we live in, mm -hmm. that we have developed a culture of dishonor, and what we as Jesus followers are called to get back to. Yeah. And I think that, you know, speaking to the culture of dishonor that we're in, you can, anyone who's followed the current state of our educational system, mm. <laughs> come on, or what um, teachers go through, you know, from some of their students is anything but honoring. Oh my gosh. Um, and so I think it, it, to some degree, it begs the question, who does society honor? And we mentioned this a little bit on the front end of the conflation of honor and respect. I think I would say we as a, as a culture, we as society, what comes naturally to us is to honor, yep. so, so treat the baseline, those whom we respect, so those whom we deem um, are successful, those who we deem have um, some skill set, something worth admiring, um, not necessarily, again, the baseline that we mentioned on the front end. That's kind of who, Absolutely. who we naturally honor. Totally, totally. So let me ask you, when it comes to the culture this day and age, what would you say are the, the, the notable either personalities or those that we regard and honor 
more so than than others. Is there anyone that comes to mind? I would say what comes naturally is um, honoring celebrities. Mm. You know, those who have a platform. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's athletes, whether it's musicians, those with Absolutely. some degree of skill. Um, again, it's the skill, it's the platform, maybe wealth, anything really that you would admire or aspire to. Yeah. I think that kind of lends itself to to what who we want to honor. Totally. I guess. Totally. Um, so those who we who have to some degree earned respect. Yes. We choose, okay, if you've earned my respect, then I'll honor you. Absolutely. Rather than I'm gonna honor you regardless, and then let's see if you earn respect. Certainly, certainly. And you know, and this isn't to undermine respect. I, I think, you know, and and certainly I don't think anybody would have interpreted, you know, our last few moments as if we are attempting to undermine respect. Respect though is earned really on what people have accomplished and what they've achieved. This is why when it comes to like the military, you know, as you sort of increase in rank, there is a greater respect given you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's protocol. It's protocol in the armed forces that when either a general or a, a heavily ribboned officer, you know, depending on the stripes on their arm or the ribbons on their chest, when they come walking down a hallway, you know, those of lesser rank, they, they are to stand at attention. They are to salute. They are to, you know, make way for. It's paying respect to the accomplishments or the tenure or the achievements of said officer. He earned that respect. Um, and, and, and yet... That is different than honor because we think that honor should be earned. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Honor should be the baseline and the knee jerk because of you're just a fellow human being. But we've reduced it to we we'll honor whether you're an icon, a celebrity, an influencer. We also are prone to honor those that align with us. Yeah. I would say we honor those that are in agreement. Yeah. If you agree with me, then I'll treat you with human dignity. Totally. Totally. Um, we many times will honor when people can do stuff for us. I mm -hmm. think honor can be uh, a f used in a manipulative form mm -hmm. that providing that I can get something from you or you can give me something that I need, I will honor you. We're good at that in our culture. Mm -hmm. Flattery. Flattery, absolutely. Whereas scripture calls, you know, flattery wickedness mm. because it's deceptive and it's disingenuous. But typically, I think you're right. We only honor those that are influencers and have platform. We've talked about that. We <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> Season one throwback. <laughs> We're, and, and I think that whole idea around alignment is why the divide is getting bigger and bigger. We tolerate those that see like us. We dishonor those that disagree with us. And we get really comfortable in that. And then we honor those that can do stuff for us. Yeah. I think it's really important for the Jesus follower to know that Jesus takes this matter of honor very, very serious. So it's not just Paul that commends it. It's not just Peter that commends it. Actually, there's a story found in the book of Mark, sixth chapter. It says this, and Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his home time. Oops, hometown. Sorry. <laughs> those, those words blurred together there a little bit. I don't have my glasses. Got to get the old specs out. <laughs> Home time. Home time. Hometown. And among his relatives and in his own household. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kind. And he then left there and would not do many miracles there. Some translations actually say that he could not do many miracles there. Now, he was God. He could do whatever he want. But because of the way they dishonored him, because of the familiarity that they had with him, yeah. it says that he left, and he would not do many miracles there. He only healed a few sick people. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, don't you I love just, that. Don't you just love that that's so telling of Jesus? Like... He couldn't do anything 
except heal a few sick people. Like, <laughs> totally. Wah, wah. Oh, like how okay, boss that's, was he? That's still that a that miracle. That seemed right? like a little thing. Yeah, if I could go somewhere and just feel, uh, just heal a few sick people, <laughs> I would call that a pretty successful day. <laughs> that would definitely be a win. Yeah, but I, I think that gives illumination to why we at the same time don't honor is because, you know, as the old adage goes, familiarity creates or breeds contempt. Yeah. Where you get used to someone or you get used to something, you can, in your mind's eye, if you're not careful, allow it to lose its value. That's exactly what they did with Jesus. Yeah. He came into his hometown and they said, isn't that Joseph's boy? Isn't he simply a carpenter's son? Like where people were regarding him and honoring him, they would, would not because they had grown familiar with him. And I think this is what happens with us, that we get familiar with either people and their mistakes or picking out their flaws or shortcomings that we then give ourselves a license to honor according to qualification. Mm -hmm. That is altogether wrong. We are called to be people that honor one another, be the fact that they were created and loved by God. What you just spoke to about familiarity, breeding, contempt, this is just my own personal curiosity. Yes. Um, have you ever experienced anything like that? In your in your role as a pastor, or you know, going to different places, has anything? Absolutely. What what was what has yeah, that been? It's a like? great question. Um, because um, you know, you will actually learn in some Bible colleges or some seminaries. They will encourage pastors not to go home. <laughs> 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 it's good. It's good. No, they will encourage pastors, and I think this is so ridiculous, not to fraternize with their congregation. What that means is, is they don't want to see the pastor become sort of seen as common. So it's encouraged in some seminaries, and they will remain nameless, to stay removed from the congregation so that they don't lose respect for you because they grow familiar with you. Mm. So when you're on the stage and you're an influencer and you're preaching and you're teaching and you're influencing, you should maintain and insulate that role so there doesn't become a familiarity where they would then dishonor you. And that, when you get right down to it, as wrong as I think that is, that is understandable, it's because that's what people do. Yeah. When they get around you and they realize, wait a minute, you don't walk on water, which pastors don't. You don't have a halo above you where you are perfect and altogether refined, which pastors are not. They do have boots caps, though. They do have boots caps and a killer shoe game. <laughs> what happens is, is that what familiarity then closes the gap on is... Th at times, the ability to receive from someone um, as an influencer or as a mentor in some regard. Me, I have disregarded that counsel altogether. Yeah. I, 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 I don't see that in Scripture. When I consider the life of Jesus, he was a man of the people. He embedded himself in and among the people. And we're not just talking, you know, a few times throughout the day. We're talking all day, every day. Yeah. So he brushed shoulders with, sat and ate dinner with, made sure that he broke bread with, prayed with, spoke to, taught, but he availed his full self to people, knowing that they would grow familiar with him. Yeah. And then dishonor him. Well, when they did that, he he, he his course of action was he rolled out. Yeah. But I do think that I've experienced where I've gotten close to people and they've realized, wait a minute, Sammy doesn't walk on water and he's just like us. Some people don't like that. Mm -hmm. They need somebody set apart or up on a pedestal. Um, this is why St. Augustine used to say, you know, whatever you idolize, you'll eventually demonize. Because once you see the, the chinks in the armor, I used to say chunks in the armor boots. <laughs> You then begin to sort of used nitpick to. This them. was last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm um, making corrections. <laughs> a fact check, but I have seen that. Yeah, um, that, I was just curious. So I kind of like to 
think of it as if you have a monarch, mm, um, come on. let's say... A Will and Kate? Well, let's say King George. <laughs> Becca's our um, in-house... What are they? Monarch <laughs> expertise. Monarch, yeah, that's the official title. Um, she's the expert there. Having lived in London. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. When you're dealing with a head of state, a monarch, the king, the queen, etc., um, there's there's a degree of decorum and respect, honor that's given. Mm. Um, okay, you got to act this certain way, like oh, the king, you know. Absolutely. An extension of that, because you hold the king in such honor, yep. whenever you see the prince or the princess, That's exactly right. it's an extension wow. of That's the good. king's honor. So yep. you still act accordingly. You still show honor and respect, and you, and you present a certain way. I liken that to um, mankind in the sense that we are all children of God. We're all made in His image. That's right. And because of that, because we hold God in such high honor, He is the King, yep. I have to show honor to you. That's exactly right. Because you are an image bearer of Him. That's 100%. that's the baseline that we work with, and we've already talked through that. Um, when it comes to Scripture, we know that's the baseline. You know, but before you move off the baseline, you know, I don't know if you saw Stealing this base. recently. Um, it was Prince Harry... That was on uh, after we're in the middle of his book tour after he released Spare. 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 Um, he was on the Stephen Coburn. Wow. Colbert. Colbert. Sorry. He was on the Stephen Colbert show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honor me. Becca is always afraid of us getting sued. For I crying know. out loud, we're allowed to say Stephen Jeez. Colbert. I mean, what? If you mess up somebody's name, is that a lawsuit? <laughs> yeah, libel. <laughs> what has happened to you in the past? <laughs> She's got defamation suits against her, apparently. Stephen Colbert. Mm, Set better. Anyway. On said show, he was actually... Uh, he allowed... Stephen as the host to sort of jab and do this, you know, sort of skit where he took shots at the queen's corgis, her two dogs, or no, actually she had more than two. She had a whole bunch of dogs. Did she not? Fact that check. was, it's fact check that. Can we pull that up? Nevertheless, it was, it was for lack of better words, it was irreverent. It was not classy at all. And it was, it was demeaning of the monarch. And me, hey, I live in the Western world and proud to be an American. Fourth How- of July, baby. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> However, there is still a regard that I give to the monarch yeah. when I consider, you know, the establishment and the history and yada, yada, yada. I didn't even like seeing that. I didn't find it funny at all. I felt like, wait a minute, it is dishonoring. I'm removed. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. I mean, God rest her soul. I don't have no connection to, but there is some things that, going back to a few weeks ago, that we should keep, you know, a reverence around. Not sacred. No sacred, sacred. Yeah, certainly not sacred. <laughs> I hope Damar but... never tweets about the queen. <laughs> Could be a lawsuit. <laughs> um, but... I, I just feel like that's because we've grown so accustomed to dishonoring. Yeah. That we're, now we're desensitized to we're it. We're desensitized. Well said. Now, I digress again, yeah. but I just wanted to make that point concerning the monarch. Yeah. All right. Well, the, the follow up question I was going to ask was if that's the baseline, then does scripture talk about any people in particular to emphasize our honor with? Yes, it does. Okay. Yes, it do. Well, then that's that. I, I would say, yes, it, it does. Actually, when you consider the Ten Commandments, this is what God gave Moses intentionally and specifically, wherein he said, honor your mother and your father. Actually, it's the only command in all of, all of the Ten where a blessing is connected to it. Honor your mother and father, and your days will be long unto you. Mm. Um, we are so used to dishonoring mom and dad now. 
And I understand, I, I, you know, for those listening, watching, you know, there's a many that had a horribly dysfunctional upbringing of where your home was anything but harmonious, safe, secure, and stable, where it was terrible and even abusive. But even still, I think there is the role of mother-father that should be honored, not for how they man that role, but for who is in that role. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know I've had many a conversations around that, and I know that does not come easy. But we're even those that have been raised in environments that are stable, secure, and safe do not see the importance of honoring mom and dad. Yeah. Um, and so we've gotten really good at it. The same reason that we don't honor mom and dad is the same reason as scripture commends us and commands us to, to honor authority. This is why, like you said earlier, kids can stand up, cuss their teacher out, and there be no consequence. Actually, if a child in our public education system stands up and cusses out a teacher... The first question is, what did the teacher do to the student? Yeah. Rather than recourse or consequence for the student. They need to be spanked. We need we need spankings back. Come on, somebody. I ain't even playing. We <laughs> think that's gonna get a lawsuit? Possibly. Becca's flailing over there. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't honor we don't honor our police officers anymore. We don't honor public servants. We don't honor fire department. We don't honor our military. We don't honor our nation. We don't honor we are so used to dishonor that we don't even honor anyone that holds any authoritative position. This is why, you know, Peter told, you know, the early church to honor the king, respect the king. The king at that time was Nero. He was the high arc. Mm. Nero was demonic, you could argue. He was wicked to the core. He persecuted and executed Christians, and yet still... Made a display of it, too. Made a display. Actually lit them, impaled them, dipped in oil to light them on fire to illuminate his gardens. Yeah. And yet still, he would say honor him. Yeah. It's it's so I don't pretend that this is easy, but what I do want to deconstruct that this does not mean one is qualified to receive it. It is more reflective of the giver than it is the receiver because this is what God tells us to do because the intrinsic value within them is to be the fact that God created them. Yeah. And um and if we don't hold that as a baseline, then we'll feel licensed more and more to dishonor, only leading to the unrest and the civil upheaval and the hatred that we're so accustomed to this day and age. Yeah. And then I, I just have a little a little sidebar of of someone that I think should be honored. And that is that I feel a deep conviction. Maybe this is just me, but I'm gonna put it on everybody else. We need to return to where we honor our elders. Like we are such a youth-driven culture where we celebrate and we champion young that it has directly and indirectly made older people feel like they don't have value mm -hmm. and don't have use. And that's because we've gotten away from in decades past and in eras past of where you would honor your elders, for the simple fact that they had more life experience than you. They had more tenure. They had more runtime. They had been through all the things that you and I are growing into. They raised their children. They endured hardship in their marriage. They served their nation. They worked an honest job with an honest wage, and they retired at a threshold. That we used to honor people for that, mm -hmm. for, for, their, for their perseverance, their endurance, and be the fact that they've been through hell and back, and they're still standing. And now, if they cannot contribute, or they're not trendy, or if they're not vibing... Or, or, they, or if they can't contribute the way that we want them to. That's it. Dishonor. Yeah. Dishonor. We have lost the art of honoring our elders, and that, it, that irks me in a deep way. That's so for me, I think it it's parents, it's authority, it's elders, and it's of course it's peers, but I think when it comes to scripture, going back to your question, 
I think those three right there are spotlighted. Emphasis. Thank you. Double honor. Double honor. Double honor to you, sir. Oh, and, and, and Scripture says that pastors are worthy of double honor. So I interpret honor many times as cash. Yeah. Cold, es- hard cash. Especially in October <laughs> for uh, Pastor Appreciation Month. Come on, somebody. Can't come fast enough, right? You got time to save. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A and again, I, away. I think that distinction between honor and respect is, is so important. Um, you know, our elders are probably worthy of both, mm. you know, worthy of honor, yep. but worthy of respect Amen. as well. Um, someone like Nero, <laughs> or perhaps, um, you know, th- when it comes to respect, do you aspire to be like them? Yes. It's a, That's it's great. a valid question. Yeah. If I don't aspire to be like you in any regard, I'm probably not going to have a ton of respect for you, but I'm going to honor you. Yes. So those people that you named that you wouldn't, honor wouldn't come easily, yes. whether it's Nero, whether it's, you know, uh, a parent who, like the situations that you brought up, right? they're not necessarily deserving of respect. That's right. But as image bearers, we're called to honor them. Well said, and brother. And then double honor to those those groups that you just mentioned. Come on, come on. And then when you get right down to it, when you get right down to it, and I'll say this, this and then um, I will digress for a third time. Mm, triple. The reason that we do not honor one another is as you said earlier, because we do not honor God. So you cannot act like, or plan to just, oh, you know what? I'm going to start honoring people. If you first have not established the fundamental or the foundation of, I'm going to honor people because I first honor my King. If you do not honor God, you're not going to honor his creation. And so um, that's where it starts. The reason we are a culture of dishonor is because we are a culture that has grown comfortable in dishonoring God. Yeah. And so, you know, as the scriptures say, the fear of the Lord, which would then be the catalyst for honor, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We live so foolishly because we don't live fearfully under the king. We think... Hey, we'll dishonor him. We'll dishonor everyone around us. Mm -hmm. Um, And so how do we get back to being a culture of honor? We first honor our creator, our great God and King, Jesus. I love it. And let me... I just gave us an A plus for this episode. (laughs) And you know what that means. What does that mean? That puts us on the honor roll. (laughs) You, you, <laughs> cheese ball. Oh, I thought of that one in the last 30 seconds, and I was like, oh, here we go. Yeah. Oh. And now I will not say the word honor for at least 30 days. Hey, Amen. That was a Me lie. neither. Me neither. <laughs> I'm all out of H's. <laughs> yeah. But if you guys enjoyed this episode, go ahead and like and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on the gram at Simplexity Podcast. And we are on YouTube. So that's the Lighthouse Church channel, the Simplexity playlist. Amen. If you want one of these hats, holler back at Shoot us a DM. We love you guys. Oh.